We can write a recursive method for this, which we'll call rfibnum, and this will determine the, the desired Fibonacci number. So this will do the exact same thing as what we just did in our previous code. Now this method is going to take three numbers as parameters. So the first two numbers would represent the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, so A1 and A2. And then our third number is going to be a number N, which is the desired nth Fibonacci number. And then our method will return the nth Fibonacci number in the sequence. We'll use the following recursive definition to compute the nth Fibonacci number. We'll have something like this. And I'll explain what's going on here in just a second. So we are going to call our fib num, and we're going to pass a, b, and n as our parameters. So here a is going to be the first Fibonacci number, so that's our a1. b is going to be our second Fibonacci number, so that would be our a2. And then, of course, n is going to be the nth Fibonacci number that we want. So now let's take a look at our definition. So if n is 1, that means we want the first Fibonacci number, which is, which is a in this case. If n is 2, then that means we want the second Fibonacci number. So that's going to be b. So then if n is greater than 2, well, we're going to have to do some computations to get that particular Fibonacci number. So we're going to have to do two recursive calls to make this work. So we would need to uh, find the n minus 1 Fibonacci number. So that's what this first recursive call is right here. And then we need to get the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. So that's where this recursive call is doing right here. And we have to take the sum of those two. So like, for example, if I want, if n is 3, then this would mean that I need to get um, the first Fibonacci number and the second Fibonacci number. Let's do an example. Uh, let's say we want to call our fib num with 2, 5, and 4. So what this means is a is going to be 2, b is going to be 5, so the first two numbers are sequence, are 2 and 5, and we want to find the fourth Fibonacci number. So let's just apply our definition. Well, 4 is greater than 2, so we have to apply our recursive definition of it. Uh, so in order to get our fib num of 2, 5, 4, that means we need to call our fib num of 2, 5, 3, and we also need to call our fib num of 2, 5, 2, take those results and add them together. That means if we want to get our results, we have to find our fib num of 2, 5, 3 and our fib num of 2, 5, 2 first. Let's start with computing our fib num of 2, 5, 3. Well, n is 3 in this case, so since that is greater than 2, we can get our fib num of 2, 5, 3 by getting our fib num of 2, 5, 2 and then adding that with the result of our fib num of 2, 5, 1. So this just means that we need to figure out our fib num of 2, 5, 2 and our fib num of 2, 5, 1. Fortunately, both of these cases are actually pretty straightforward. Our fib num of 2, 5, 2 is going to be 5 because n is 2 and b is 5. So if we go to our recursive definition, we just take b, and since b is 5, this gives us 5. Likewise, for 2, 5, 1, uh, we have that n is 1, so by our definition of computing our fib num, we would take a, and since a is 2, this result is going to be 2. Therefore, to compute our fib num of 2, 5, 3, we just add 5 and 2 together, and that gives us 7. We'll then do the second part, which was to compute our fib num of 2, 5, 2. But we've already done that. Uh, we've already seen that it's 5 because n is 2. And from our definition, that means that we would get b, and b is 5. So we've already done that, but we got to do it again, but we know this is 5. So that means if we want to get our fib num of 2, 5, 4, well, we said that is going to be our fib num of 2, 5, 3, plus our fib num of 2, 5, 2. We've already mentioned that our fib num of 2, 5, 3 is 7, and our fib num of 2, 5, 2 is 5. So we add those two together, and that gives us 12. So that is the result of our fib num of 2, 5, 4. So here is the recursive method for finding our Fibonacci number. So we see that we have the two base cases. So here is the first base case where n is 1, we would return a. And then we have our second base case right here. So if n is 2, we're going to return b. And then finally, we have our recursive step or our recursive case. And all we're doing is just calling our fib num where we would just pass n minus 1 for one of them and n minus 2 for the other. All we're doing here is just basically applying that recursive definition for computing our fib num. 
A few things I want to mention about this particular recursive method. So what makes this recursive method a little different is that the recursive step actually consists of two recursive calls. This is very rare. Well, I wouldn't say very rare, but it's rare. But there are some cases where we would use this. Quicksort was another example where we would have two recursive calls. So in this case, what we find is the recursive version of this program is not as efficient as the non-recursive version because we have these additional recursive calls. And what we would find here, and we kind of saw in our earlier example, is that with the recursive version, some values are calculated more than once. Just to give another example, um, if we wanted to calculate arpib num of 235, we would actually calculate arpib num of 232 uh, three, three times. We saw in our earlier example, to if we want to calculate arpib num of 234, we actually had to calculate arpib num of 232 a couple of times. So we see that we are repeating these calculations of certain values. Now we might be able to do some fancy tricks to, to help with it, but we usually can't. Uh, so what we find is a recursive method is easier to write. So we saw in our method that we just had a couple lines of code and it was really easy to implement it, but it may not be uh, very efficient. We'll now take a look at the complete code using the recursive approach. And we've already seen the recursive method, so we're just going to take a look at it and run it and show that it actually works. We're still going to use dialog boxes here, but the one difference I, I made with this code was that I did all the input and output inside main. That way, our recursive method can just deal with the computation part of it because we don't want to deal with input, user input and output in the recursive method. So we still have our input to ask for the first and second Fibonacci numbers and we will store that information in our output string. We'll then ask for the nth Fibonacci number that we want. So that's going to be an nth fib. But the recursive call is actually being done right here in our output string. And that's okay because this will give us some value then that will be stored in our output string. And then we'll display the output dialog box. So we're going to call our fib num where we're going to pass pre one, pre two. So the first two Fibonacci numbers in the sequence and the desired Fibonacci number. So let's go and take a look at our method here. This is it. This is the exact same uh, definition that we had before. I mean, this is just our recursive definition. So if n is one, we return a. If n is two, we return b, the second Fibonacci number. Otherwise, we're gonna do recursive calls with a, b, and n minus one, and then a, b, and n minus two. And that will give us our result. So let's actually uh, try this. So let's compile. Everything worked just fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and run it. There's our dialog box. So let's just do some of our earlier examples just to make sure this is working properly. So I can do one, one, and we'll get the 10th Fibonacci number. That gives us 55. I think we did that earlier and it, that is in fact the correct number. So that works. Uh, let's do uh, another example here. Let's do the one that we, we did already in class. Uh, so let's say we do two as our first Fibonacci number and then five as our second Fibonacci number. And we want to get the fourth uh, Fibonacci number in the sequence. So sure enough, that does give us 12. And we already traced through this earlier and saw that it was 12. So this, in fact, does give us a recursive approach for computing Fibonacci numbers.